we could write an entire book about who's good for you and the whole book is just going to be you know thousands of positive traits and then that person is not going to exist Hi, this is Peter Kowaki, and I'm here today with uh, Sasha Silverberg from OK Sasha. Uh, she's a matchmaker based in San Francisco. So let's talk about how we know when we found the right one. I'm gonna, you're a matchmaker. I'm gonna start with the, the most important question. What do you look for in a good match? You know, it's funny. People always ask me, how do I match people? Yeah. And so, Part of it is you would not find surprising. So I would say about 50% of it is do these people ha have compatible lifestyles? Do these people have the same goals? Do they both want kids? Do they both want marriage? Do they have the same core values? Do they both want kids? Um, you know, all of these really major things that it would be ridiculous if I didn't pay attention to those things. So I wouldn't set somebody up who wants kids with somebody who doesn't want kids because that's just fundamentally not going to work. Yeah. Um, so, so I would say 50% of it is that. And then the other 50% of it is just, am I excited? So it's really this internal barometer for me where I'm trying to figure out, do I feel excited about matching these people and so if I feel excited about it that's how I'm I keep in touch with my intuition okay so it's an intuition game then basically absolutely because the thing that makes matchmaking unique is that there is that human element there's the intuition because if it's just core do you guys have the same core values you can match that on a spreadsheet <laughs> that's an algorithm you know? yeah exactly <laughs> Well, you know, you, I, you mentioned that some of those big logistics need to be taken into account. You know, you need to you need to know what your big logistics are. The I need I want kids. I I do want to travel a lot. I want to be a digital nomad, or I, you know, I want this kind of lifestyle. And those, you know, we often uh, we often teach people how to love and build that connection. Love's the easy part. Um, it's these big logistics that are a lot harder to square sometimes. Um, do you find right. do you find that people sometimes have too many logistics that they check, too many check boxes? Is that ever a problem with anybody you talk with? So I think it's while I do think it's important to know what you're looking for and have a good understanding of what is most important, I also think it's important to understand that humans do not fit into check boxes. So you need to kind of have this balance of this is what I'm looking for in a partner and these are the most important things to me, but also have that leeway of understanding that this person is not necessarily going to fit every single thing. So I think I'm a great example. My partner is, I, I always dated guys who were six foot tall and above and the partner I have now is five seven. And I mean, like I told you before, this is my job. I talk to so many women about this. I always hear women telling me, I want a guy who's five nine plus. Yeah. I don't know what it is about five nine, but that's just five nine, five ten. That's just like the magic number. And so I hear that. And right now I have a partner who's five seven, which is I don't know, six inches shorter than what I the kind of person I normally go for. And do I care about that? No, that's the least thing that I care about about him. I don't it, I don't even notice it anymore. And so really what it is is yes, having check boxes, but not having too many check boxes. Because then you're going to find yourself in a position where you can't find anyone who meets any of your standards. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I've, I uh, we have many uh, uh, dating coaches and, and matchmakers uh, as partners with Kwaki Coaching, and I've heard this one before. <laughs> How many yeah. are the ideal number of check boxes? You know, when should people be going? Ah, oh, I've got too many. That's hard to say. I mean, to put a number on it, it feels like. I mean. 
like I was saying before, you need to create a list and then just keep narrowing it down and narrow, forcing yourself to narrow it down until you find yourself saying, these truly are things that I, under any circumstance, it doesn't matter who this person is, cannot let go of. Mm -hmm. I cannot. must have these. Like, there does not, exactly, there does not exist a person that I would get along with who doesn't have this quality. Yeah. Yeah. So. I really think that's the way to think about it. Because otherwise you're just going to, we could write an entire book about who's good for you. And the whole book is just going to be, you know, thousands of positive traits. And then that person is not going to exist. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you very much for taking the time to talk with me, Sasha. I really appreciate Absolutely. it. And uh, for those who are, uh, for those who live in the San Francisco Bay Area and would like some matchmaking uh, help, uh, you can go to OKSasha.com. Thanks again for talking with us, Sasha. I really appreciate it. Oh, my God. It was so fun. Okay. Done. Boom.